I read an interesting blog post over the weekend. It's about the fact that we think we live in such modern, dare I say, progressive times. But in many senses, what we're seeing are trends that are repeats in a way. Not technologically the same, but in essence the same. For example, uh, we think that it's very modern to have uh, meals uh, delivered, to have meals prepared out of the house and delivered, to uh, eat out at restaurants as opposed to having having to cook at home or having to, to make the effort to cook at home. Uh, we think it's wonderful that everything can be delivered to us at home, you know, a la Amazon.com or Jet.com. But as this blog post pointed out, in the 1800s in London, eating out was what people did, even the relatively poor. That's because it cost more to cook at home. It cost more because the effort of going and buying food from different vendors, if you could find a vendor, was very expensive. Also, most houses didn't have kitchens. That's because people didn't live in traditional houses as they did in smaller villages, but in a city like London, uh, they lived in apartments and most of those apartments didn't have kitchens. Instead, they had a fireplace and the fireplace was used as a kitchen. Historically, it was used uh, to put a pot over some coals and to make dinner, but that required firewood, which was expensive. It required time. So, what developed was a culture uh, in which even the poor uh, ate at uh, roadside stands and at which even the working class uh, could afford to have meals delivered. Meals delivered not only consisting of the food, uh, but together with the uh, plates and utensils. Uh, just like uh, the uh, you know fancy uh, uh, box dinners that services delivered today, the same thing was true in 1800s London, in terms of ride sharing. People tended not to own their own carriages because those were very expensive. So instead, there was a plethora of other ways to, in essence, share rides, from the bus system uh, to uh, cabs. Uh, to shared uh, coaches. There was also the notion there of, there and then, of shopping coming to you. Uh, there were not, you know, department stores. There were not supermarkets. So instead, to the extent that you did buy food for your house, you owned a home as opposed to living in an apartment. You had a kitchen. You probably had a staff. Uh, there were fishmongers who'd sell fish. There were people who just sold watercress. They called them watercress girls who would uh, deliver watercress for salads and I suppose little sandwiches. Uh, so in a sense, it wasn't like Amazon. One call brought it all or one click brings it all. Uh, but it was a, uh, a series of merchants who sold generally one line of goods uh, to people in their, their homes. You know, I also read an article about books. It was sort of interesting that in 2016, uh, ebook sales were down approximately 17% from the year before in the United States, while the sales of print books was up 4.5%, another trend. So while history may not repeat itself, as it's been said, it sure does rhyme. You know, this is seen in healthcare too, in terms of what I've described as the impending death of hospitals. You know, healthcare was something that was originally delivered in the home. Uh, the notion in the United States of public hospitals didn't exist until the uh, mid or so 18th century, when uh, Dr. Charles Bond and uh, Ben Franklin. Uh, formed the first uh, public hospital in the U.S., Pennsylvania Hospital, because the poor didn't have a home in which to receive care. So these same trends are repeating themselves. Now, with hospitals 
in essence losing, losing favor, both in terms of their attractiveness to patients and in terms of their uh, pricing themselves out of the market in terms of many uh, payers. So care is going out to freestanding facilities, surgery centers, external as opposed to hospital-based imaging facilities uh, and the like. In fact, in all probability, back to the home care setting. So these trends exist like uh, narrow ties and wide ties. They go, you know, around in circles. So think about how you could tie your practice to these trends. The trends are not going to go away. Yes, some will be able to buck the trend, some few. Some will be able to provide a sort of counter trend at an early stage in a way to uh, distinguish themselves uh, from other competitors. Uh, but if the trend in the world, in the marketplace, is moving, for example, from hospitals to outside of hospitals, how is that going to affect your practice? How can you hit, how can you hit your future to that trend?